This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell. Yeah, danger is my assignment. I get sent to a lot of places I can't even pronounce. They all spell the same thing, though. Trouble. But when I walk into the commissioner's office, I don't realize this assignment's going to end up with me smashing a spy ring because a trained seal gets a bad case of the blues. Ruth said you wanted to see me. I do, Steve. You're leaving for Istanbul, Turkey on the next plane. Turkey? Oh, great. Last time I was there, as I remember, I got stabbed at, shot at, and beaten up in that order. Well, maybe you'll be lucky enough to change the order of events around a little this time. Oh, swell. You'll probably need to take a large rubber ball and a dead fish with you. Let's have that again. You're to contact a character named Lefty over there. So what's a rubber ball and a dead fish got to do with it? Lefty is a trained seal. You know, for a minute, I thought you said a trained seal. That's just what I did say. More particularly, you ought to talk to his owner, a vaudeville entertainer named Sam. Now, just a minute, Commissioner. I'm a pretty patient guy. You send me to a lot of strange places to do a lot of strange things. But if you think I'm going to fly clear to Turkey to audition a trained seal act, you'd... Why, Steve, I thought you always fancied yourself as a sort of talent scout. Well, in certain fields, maybe, but (laughs) trained seals yet. All kidding aside, Steve... We're up against a tough proposition. You mean the seal wants more dough for his act? I mean there's been a very clever spy ring operating throughout the Middle East. Its entire operation seems to depend on one person. Quite a bit of confidential information from this country seems to have been transmitted by this ring. That's why it's vital to us that it be smashed, that the ringleader be caught. Well, what's all this got to do with a seal? Don't tell me you think that I'm he's the one... I'm telling you that. Steve, as you probably heard, Yusuf Tokat, head of Turkish intelligence, was murdered the night before last. There was a bomb rigged in his car. When he stepped on the starter, he was blown up. I see. You think Tokat was on the trail of the head of this man, this spiring fellow? Definitely. Hmm. But where do the train seal and his owner figure in the deal? That's for you to find out. All we know is that they're apparently involved in some way. Well, that's a nice handful of nothing to go on. You'll work with Lieutenant Balik of the Istanbul Police, Steve. Now, get over there. Talk to Balik. Talk to the seal's owner. Talk to the seal if you have to. But find out who that spy ringleader is and grab him. That's it. You've got your assignment. Good luck. NBC is presenting Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy in the role of Steve Mitchell, colorful, two-fisted government agent. At all those places of the world where danger and intrigue walk hand in hand, There you will find Steve Mitchell on another dangerous assignment. Sure, I've got my assignment. Just talk to a trained seal named Lefty and find out who's heading a spy ring in the Middle East. Yeah, real sense. Well, it's Thursday when I get to Istanbul and I head for Lieutenant Balik's office. It is a pleasure to welcome you, Mr. Mitchell. I hope you will be able to help us get to the bottom of this mystifying affair. Well, I'll give it the old school try, Lieutenant. First, I would like you to meet Dalmud. I am honored, Mr. Mitchell. Dalmud? Dalmud is Tokat's assistant. I arranged for him to be here to give you such information as he possesses. I see. Now, as I understand it, Dalmud, your boss, Joseph Tokat, was head of intelligence here and was on the trail of the leader of the spy ring that's been operating throughout the Middle East? That is correct. It is our theory, of course, that he was getting close to this person and was blown up in his automobile for that reason. Yeah. Did he give you any indication as to who he thought he was after? Not much. Tokat was a very brilliant agent, but very close-mouthed. He preferred to operate alone. He did mention to me that he was not sure whether this person was a man or woman, but that is all he said. Which, unfortunately, does not give us much to go on. No, it sure doesn't, Lieutenant Balik. Uh, look, Dalmud, how about uh, Tokat's files? Did you find anything there that might give us a lead? Unfortunately, no. In his confidential files is a folder pertaining to the investigation he was undertaking at the time of his murder. But it is 
just general information. Uh, one sheet of paper had been torn out, however. Probably the sheet that pegs the killer. Well, looks like we're getting nowhere fast. Incidentally, can either of you tell me how this guy Sam and his trained seal figure in this deal? We know only that Tokat's car was parked three blocks from the theater where the trained seal performs. And that Tokat is supposed to have attended the performance the night of his murder. So what? That isn't much of a tie-in. But since the murder, Mitchell, there have been several attempts on the life of this Sam. The SEAL's trainer. Oh, well, maybe that throws a new light on things. Where do I find this guy, Sam? He has an apartment not far from here. Simply show this pass to the guard and he will admit you. Okay, thanks. I'll check with you later, gentlemen. Outside Sam's apartment house, there's a rugged-looking guard who lets me by. After looking at my pass, I knock on Sam's door. And after a long pause, it's opened by a little withered-up-looking gent with a towel on one arm. So, uh, what's the deal, Jack? You Sam? Sam it is. What's yours, Jack? Steve Mitchell from the States. Here's my credentials. Hmm? Oh, yeah, yeah, they told me you were coming. Come on in, Jack. Uh, Steve. Sure, Jack. Uh, go ahead. Finish washing up. We can talk later. Hey, washing up? Yeah, your arms. They're all wet. <laughs> I'm giving Lefty a bath, Jack. Steve. Oh, you mean that seal? Sure. Come on, we can talk while I'm finishing up. Okay. Here's Lefty. Ain't he a beaut? Brother, in the bathtub yet. Where else, Jack? Steve. Uh, you really take good care of him, don't you? He's my bread and butter, Steve. Jack, I mean... Hmm? Oh, skip it. This is Steve, Lefty. Not impressed. Eh, don't worry about that. Lefty's always suspicious of strangers at first. Well, maybe I should show him my credentials. You know, Jack, I'm worried about Lefty. What do you mean? Well, he hasn't been himself the last few days. <clears throat> Acts real depressed. I wonder if he could have eaten something that didn't agree with him. Oh, now, easy, Lefty, easy. I gotta get the little flipper whippers clean. Look, look, now, right now I'm more interested in what you know about Tokat's murder than I am in Lefty's diet. Oh, sure. You know, it's a funny thing about that, that... Nah, now nah, come to think of it, it ain't funny. I'm scared. At first, I don't think there's any connection. But about the time of the second attempt... Wait a I... minute, let's start at the beginning, huh? Okay. You see, Jack, I'm playing at the theater just down the street. They got an English-language movie there, a newsreel, then a couple of vaudeville acts, two baggy-pants comics, a dancer, and Lefty and me. And according to your story, Yosef Tokat was in the theater the night that he was murdered? Oh, he sure was. How do you know? Because that night, Lefty got depressed. And when he gets depressed, I got to cut his act short. So I fill in the time by going down into the audience and giving them a few magic tricks. You know, pulling pigeons out of their hats, picking their pockets, stuff like that. Go on. Well, so I pick out this one guy in the audience. And it turns out to be this Yosef Tokat who gets himself killed a few minutes later. You sure it was Tokat? Well, sure, I'm sure. I got to look at his name on his wallet. And if that ain't enough, the next night I spot him in the newsreel. Then I hear the guy got himself knocked off. And then, Jack, then things start happening to yours truly. What sort of things? Well, first it's a sandbag falling on me backstage. Then some joker throws a shot at me from an alley. Wait a minute. You say you pulled Tokat's wallet out of his pocket. Could you have taken anything else with it? I don't get you, Jack. A piece of paper, maybe. Or could Tokat have slipped you the paper without your knowing about it? Well, I don't see how. Hey... What are you getting at? There's a very important piece of paper missing from Tokat's confidential files and could contain information about his killer. And if you had it without knowing about it, it could explain why the killer might be after you. Nah, nah, it don't boil, Jack. I empty my pockets every night. There was nothing in them after the performance the night Tokat was there. Hmm. Incidentally, does Lefty here stay on the stage while you're doing your act? <laughs> you see? You see how he knows his name? Sensational. Oh, he's a doll. <laughs> nah, he follows me through the audience. The people get a charge out of petting him. I see. Well, I guess all of this leaves me just about where I was before. Oh, I'm sorry I can't be any more help, Jack. But I hope you'll get this guy off my neck, whoever he is. Yeah. Well, see you later, Jack. Sam. <laughs> I go back outside and nod to the guard who's standing over in the shadows and get into my car. So far, what I've got is a big hunk of nothing. About a block away from Sam's apartment house, it starts raining, so I reach into the back seat for my trench coat. But what my hand hits isn't a trench coat. It's a body. I jam my foot on the brake, turn my flashlight into the back seat. It's the body of the guard who was on duty when I went into the apartment. Then it hits me. 
I didn't get a good look at the guy in the shadows when I came out. Now I know he wasn't the guard at all. He's the killer. I head back to the apartment in a hurry. The door's unlocked. Left me honking frantically, and Sam's on the floor with a cloth tapped over his face. As I bend over him, I get a strong whiff of a sick, sweet smell. Chloroform. Sam. Sam. Come out of it, Sam. Come on, Sam. Oh, oh hiya, Jack. Yeah, Jack. What happened? Uh, you tell me. Right after you left, I hear a knock on the door. I think maybe you've forgotten something. So I open the door and I get belted right between the eyes. You didn't see who hit you? Oh, I was too busy gazing at all those stars. Oh, brother, it was sure convenient you came back when you did. Yeah, yeah, it sure was, Sam. Look, Jack, would you mind taking me and Lefty to the theater? My act is on in about an hour. You sure you feel like going on? Yeah, I'm a still a little groggy, but I'll be okay. You're pretty quick on the recovery, aren't you, Sam? Sure, that's me, Jack. Snap right back into shape. Okay. I'll call Lieutenant Bollock and tell him what happened, and then I'll take you over to the theater. Bollock meets us at the theater, and he and I stay to watch the show. In case there's another attempt on Sam's life, we sit through the feature, and then comes the newsreel Sam told us about. It's a shot of some Turkish army maneuvers. The importance of these maneuvers is borne out by the presence of the officials who are witnessing them. Government agent Yusuf Tokat, his assistant Dalmud, General Abura. That's how Sam General knew Tokat was in here the night of his murder, Bali. He saw his name on his wallet, and then he spotted him in this newsreel shot the next night. Yes, see, there's Tokat standing by the tank. After the newsreel comes the stage show, we watch Sam and Lefty go through their act. Lefty's still depressed, so Sam has to fill in by pulling pigeons out of people's pockets. Balak and I are on the edge of the seats waiting for something to happen, but nothing does. Sam finishes his act and the feature starts. Bollock and I head backstage for Sam's dressing room. Yes? I, uh... Oh. <laughs> well, looks like we got the wrong dressing room. I'm looking for Sam. This is his dressing room. Come on in. Thanks. Sam's in the next room trying to get Lefty to take a nap or something. I don't think I've had the pleasure... Doris. Steve Mitchell, Doris, and this is Lieutenant Bollock. I am honored. Hi, Lieutenant. You're a friend of Sam's? I've been working for him the last few days. Oh? Sort of helping him run his act. Taking care of Lefty, stuff like that. You say you've only been with him a few days? Yeah, I'm a dancer out of a job. Got to make a living some way, you know. A dancer? Ballet, perhaps? Not exactly. On the late show the other night, I threw my sacroiliac out of joint. Maybe that'll give you a clue. Uh, I see. Oh, hiya, fellas. Uh, good evening. We would like a few words with you. Sure thing, Jack. Balik. It won't do you any good, Balik. Hmm? Skip it. Uh, let's go out in the hall to talk, though. I finally got Lefty to sleep. Hey, stay with Lefty, huh, Doris? Sure, sure. Well, nothing happened during the act tonight. So we noticed. Oh, I'm glad you guys were there. I was really jumpy. You saw no one in the audience looking at you in such a way as to arouse your suspicions, Sam? Well, a couple of them aroused my suspicions, but they might be critics. You can't please everybody, I guess. Uh, just one thing more. This girl, Doris. Oh, not bad, huh? No, not bad. Well, how long have you known her? Oh, I've seen her knocking around in this neck of the woods for quite a while. But she only came to work for you a few nights ago, is that right? Mm-hmm. She lost her job. Uh, so she told us. One bump too many. Well, so I knew she was down and out, and I put her to work for me. Let's see, it was the night before Tolcott was bumped off, I think it was. Okay, that's all, Sam. I'll pick you up after the late show and take you back to your apartment. Hey, some service, huh? A personal bodyguard yet. See you later, Jack. Brother, this deal is making less sense by the moment. I'm afraid you are right. Why would Tilcott's killer be trying to knock off Sam unless Sam had something incriminating in his possession? You are thinking of the missing piece of paper from Tilcott's confidential file. Yeah. That's the only way it makes sense, Lieutenant, but Sam swears up and down he doesn't have anything like that. Mitchell, you seem quite interested in this girl, Doris. Not that I blame you, but I Look, don't see... remember when I first arrived here in Istanbul, we were talking in your office with Dalmut, Tokat's assistant? Of course. Dalmut told us that Tokat had mentioned he was not sure whether this person he was after was a man or a woman. That's right. You think perhaps that... It's uh... just a thought, Lieutenant, and right now it's about the only one I have. In fact, I'm running out of leads. How about you? I have only one left, and Dalmud is investigating it right now. What do you mean? He is searching Tokat's house in the hope that he might find that piece of paper somewhere. Well, sounds like a pretty slim chance, but any chance is welcome right now. Come on, let's go on over. Just 
tell me, have you been able to find anything, Dalmud? Oh, not a thing, Lieutenant. I have turned this house upside down. I have slit every cushion, pulled up every rug, tapped all woodwork. That piece of paper is not here. Great. That just about does it. Without it, what can we do? Well, right now I'm afraid I don't have an answer to that question, Dalmud. I'm beat. <laughs> I go back to the theater, pick up Sam and Lefty, and take him to Sam's apartment. Sam fixes up a bed for me on the couch, and we all turn in. Try letting a depressed seal with indigestion sing you to sleep sometime. Oh, it's great. But I finally manage to doze off, and then... Mitchell! Wait! Mitchell! Sam's shout brings me out of it fast. I jump off the couch and pull open his bedroom door. The lights are off, but I spot a glint of metal near the window. A gun. I take a dive just in time. But on my way down, my head crashes into the corner of the dresser. And that puts me to sleep fast. Mitchell. Steve. Hey, Jack. Oh. Oh. That up, boy, Jack. That up, boy. Oh, uh, Sam. Yeah. Oh, brother, you really collected yourself a lump on the head. Yeah, right now I'm not sure which is my head and which is the lump. But, hey, what happened? Well, I'm just dozing off when I hear someone easing my window open. So I sit up. There's a guy crawling in with a gun. I give a yell. He whirls and starts out the window just as you come charging in. So he throws a shot at you and beats it. Did you get any kind of a good look at him, Sam? Yeah. It was pretty dark, but there was enough moonlight coming in the window so I could spot his face. So you'd recognize him if you ever saw him again? Jack, I've already seen that guy before. What? Look, remember this Yosef Tokat? Sure, the guy who got murdered. Why? Guess again, Jack. What do you mean? The guy who came in the window. That was Yosef Tokat. Mitchell, I tell you, this cannot be. Yusuf Tokat is dead. Look, all I'm telling you is what Sam told me a few minutes ago in his apartment, Lieutenant. But it is impossible. Tokat's car was completely demolished by that bomb. Apparently, when he stopped, uh, when he stepped on the car. Well, how about the body in the car? Are you positive it was Tokat? We have no reason to believe otherwise. The signet ring on one finger was identified as that of Tokat. Also, the wristwatch. Of course, the clothes and the papers were burned when the car exploded, but... And there wasn't enough left of the body to make a complete and positive identification, right? Well, That's I... what I thought. But, Mitchell, this whole thing is preposterous. If Tokat is alive, whose body was in the car? There you've got me. And above all, if Tokat is alive, why is he in hiding? Dalmud told us that Tokat liked to operate alone and undercover. Maybe he figured he'd have a better chance to nab the leader of the spy ring that way. Look. Let's suppose for a moment that Tokat is alive and try to reconstruct what might have happened that night. The night he was supposedly murdered. Yeah, let's say that for some unknown reason, Tokat wanted to make it look like he was dead. He plants a body in his car with a time bomb, then slips into a darkened theater to get out of sight for the time being. But he's trapped by the stage show. He can't get up and walk out with all the lights on. Then Sam comes down into the audience and lifts his wallet, and then... Then what? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. It doesn't seem to track quite right. Indeed it does not. It leaves too many questions unanswered. Whose body was in that car? And why is Tokat trying to kill Sam? Wait a minute. There's one possible answer. I'll admit it's fantastic, but this whole deal is fantastic. Well, what is the answer? Look, we know Tokat was trying to get the leader of a spy ring. Now, why would he be going after Sam? Mitchell, that means that... That means that I'm going back and have a little talk with our friend Sam right now. Mitchell, come on in. Oh, I'm glad you're back, Jack. I was uh, getting a little jittery. Oh, you? Yeah? Oh, sure. You think I like this routine of nearly getting killed three times? Yeah. Nearly getting killed is right. But it never seems quite to happen, does it, Sam? Hmm? Hey, what's the pitch? What are you getting at? You've been in vaudeville quite a while, haven't you? Uh, longer than I can keep track of anymore. You've probably done a little acting in your time, too. Oh, sure. Until I met Lefty. Yeah, but maybe you've been doing some pretty convincing acting in this deal, Sam. Acting? Acting scared. Acting like somebody's been trying to kill you. Acting like somebody's trying to kill me, he says. Jack, have you blown your cork? You told me somebody tried to bean you with a sandbag backstage the other night. Anybody see it happen? Nobody else was around. And you said somebody threw a shot at you from an alley. Anybody else witnessed that? Well, I don't think so. Now, look, and Jack... And tonight, you... you said Joseph Tocat crawled into your bedroom window trying to kill you. But you were the only one that saw him. He took a shot at you, remember? Somebody took a shot at me. 
I'm beginning to wonder if it was you. Me? Uh, look, Jack, I'll tell you what. You've been working pretty hard lately. Now, why don't you just sit down on that couch and take it easy? And I'll show you a new trick I worked on for my act. You could have killed Tocat with a time bomb. Oh, sure, sure. He didn't like my act, so I killed him. Look, Jack, I don't know what kind of a kick you're on with this thing, but if I've killed this character, Tocat, would I be pretending he's alive and after me? I wouldn't want to be linked to him at all, would I? I was afraid that point would pop up sooner or later, Sam. Now, I guess it doesn't add up that way. Eh, you've just been thinking too hard. Come on, Jack, let me show you my new trick. It'll take your mind off things. You see, I got a little red ball and a little white ball. Look, I'm in no mood for tricks, Sam. But it only takes a second, and it's a good one. Since Lefty's been depressed, I gotta keep coming up with new tricks to fill out the act. So I want to try this one on you. Wait a minute. What now? Sam. If you are in the clear, that means you still must have some piece of incriminating evidence. Oh, no. no now we're back on that piece of paper routine. Yeah. For the last time, Jack, I don't have it. I don't mean you. I mean your seal. Lefty? You say he follows you through the audience. You also told me that he's been acting like he ate something and didn't agree with him. Where is he? Well, he's asleep in the next... Oh, no. Now, look. Somebody could have slipped that paper to him. Well, you look. I'm a member in good stand of, of the anti vivisection League. You go cutting at the lefty's dead body, and it's going to be over mine of the same name. Yeah, but there's a chance that there's maybe... Oh, are you kidding? If somebody did feed that paper to lefty, it it happened four days ago. Uh, yeah. You're right. All of which leaves me just where I was before. Nowhere. Brother, what a headache. And things used to be so peaceful in the Navy. All right, now. You ready? Ready. The trick, the trick. Huh? Oh, okay. Okay, go ahead. Now, what color ball am I holding in my left hand? Red. And in my right hand? White. A red ball and a white ball, right? Now, I mix them around a little, then I take one of them in my fingers. Which one is it? Red. I put it under this hat. There. Some trick. Ah, wait till you see the snapper. Now, which ball does that leave me here in my fist? White. So I slip this one into your pocket. There. Now, where's the red ball? Under the hat. And the white one? In my pocket. Lift up the hat. Yeah? Okay. Hmm. The white ball. Now pull the other one out of your pocket. Yeah. Red. <laughs> That's pretty neat, eh? The red ball travels from the hat to your pocket and the white ball vice versa. Yeah, pretty neat. Well, I guess I'll be getting along. Hey, I... now, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I haven't told you how to do it. Okay. Okay. So how do you do it? Well... You thought you were looking at the red ball when I slipped it under the hat, but you weren't. That was just a little cellophane shield that made it look red. Actually, it was the white ball. I palmed the red cellophane when I slipped the ball under the hat. Then when I put the other ball in your pocket, you didn't even look at it. You were sure it was white because you thought you'd seen me put the red one under the hat. Okay, so now I know how to do it. I'll be a while with it back in the state. Well, mm. I'll see you later, Sam. And give my very best to Lefty. Uh, hey. What's the matter? Just a minute. Let's go over that trick again. I know it. It grows on you. It sure it? does. Now, as I get it, you look at the white ball and think it's red, but it's really only a piece of red cellophane over it. That's right. That's right. Then you don't pay any attention to the real red ball because you're convinced you've already seen it. Hey, you got it down perfect. Sam, you just showed me something. Oh, sure. My new trick. You showed me a lot more than that. A lot more than you realize. Come on. Wait, wait, wait. Wait, 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 too. Get a babysitter for Lefty. You and I are going to theater. <laughs> I get the manager out of bed and make him open up the theater for us. Then I have him run the newsreel. I plunk Sam down in the seat to watch it. Pretty soon comes the shot of the Army maneuvers. The importance of these maneuvers is borne out by the presence of the officials who are witnessing them. Government agent Yusuf Tokat, his assistant Dalmud, General Abura. That's it. That's it. Stop the projector. Now, that's the shot in which you picked out Tilcott at the night after you lifted his wallet here in the theater, right? Yeah, that's right. Okay, take a good look at that picture and point out Tilcott to me. Uh, hey, that's him right there. Where? The guy sitting in the Jeep. Yeah, that's what I thought. Come on. Well, say, what is this anyway? A cook's tool? Yeah. Well, uh, where are we going now? Down to police headquarters. Come on, get in. Oh, look, Jack. If you're still trying to involve me in this setup, I... Don't worry about that, Sam. They may pin a medal on you. A medal? Sure. You just solved the case with that red ball, white ball trick of yours. I still don't get it. 
That doesn't matter. I get it. And I'm sure Lieutenant Valley will get it, too, when I tell him. You will never tell him, Mitchell. Well, uh, Mitchell, a guy in the back seat with a gun. Hey, it's Tokat. Oh, not Tokat, Sam. It's Dalmud, Tokat's assistant. Keep driving straight ahead, Mitchell. And remember, this gun is pointed at the back of your head. Okay, Dalmud. Where to? Out of the city. You can guess the rest. But I tell you, this is the guy who tried to kill me earlier tonight. That's right. And he's the guy I saw in the newsreel after he's been in the theater. Sure, that's the point, Sam. Dalmud killed Tokat, planted his body in the car with a time bomb, and then took his wallet and slipped into the theater to get out of sight. He figured that in that wallet might be the slip of paper which put the finger on him as the head of the spy ring. Right, Dalmud? <laughs> it's a pity you did not solve the case until too late, is it not? So when you pulled Tokat's wallet out of Dalmud's pocket, you naturally figured Dalmud was Tokat. Then, the next night, in the newsreel, you spot the guy who was in the theater sitting in a jeep, and again, you naturally figure it's Tokat, but instead it was Dalmud here. Jack, you figured that out from the trick I showed you? Sure. Tokat's wallet was just like the red cellophane that makes the white ball look red. It made you think Dalmud was Tokat. But let me assure you that your sleight of hand will do you no good now. Well, sleight of hand's a funny thing, Dalmud. Sometimes the hand's quicker than the eye, and sometimes even quicker than the hand is the foot. <laughs> oh, Valentine. Uh, you can't aim when you're draped over the front seat. Well, let go of the gun. Sure, right now. What? <laughs> oh, Jack. That's what you call a clip. Well, I guess it'll keep him on ice until we get him to police headquarters. You know, this all goes to show you how smart Lefty is. You mean that seal of yours? Well, sure. He's the guy who pulled off this whole deal. Oh, really? Well, just how do you figure that? Well, if Lefty hadn't gotten depressed, I wouldn't have thought up that new trick. Huh? And if I hadn't thought up that new trick, you wouldn't have tumbled into the deal. You see how easy it figures? Okay, okay. So I suppose Lefty and I should trade jobs. Oh, now, Jack, Jack, that would never work. Oh, well, thanks for giving me a little credit. No, no. What I mean is, you could never learn to balance a rubber ball on your nose. The NBC Chimes will be ringing soon for the return of the irrepressible Bob Hope. Hope returns Tuesday, October 3rd, with more laughs and timely satire in his inimitable manner. Wednesday evening chime listening includes that master of the ad-lib and clever quip with rapid talk and that international walk, Groucho Marx. Groucho begins his hilarious quiz game, You Bet Your Life, on Wednesday, October 4th, two weeks from tonight. Remember, Bob Hope, October 3rd, Groucho Marx, October 4th. Dangerous Assignment, starring Brian Donlevy as Steve Mitchell, is written by Bob Reif and Adrian Jandot, with music composed and conducted by Basil Adlam, and is produced and directed by Bill Carn. Be with us again next week at this time, when Brian Donlevy, starring as Steve Mitchell, will embark on another Dangerous Assignment. Three chimes mean good times on NBC. This is Cerebral Cinema. Movies of the Mind.